Welcome friends, it's Kaylee Bird, and today I have got a super fun and creepy skull trio for you. That's right, these are my 3D paintings, starting of course with an oil painting, then I build my shadow box frames, and fill in all of the fun, found, creepy goodness I can within layers of clear acrylic resin. So today's video is gonna be a fun one. I'm gonna walk you through the whole process. So make sure you go ahead and pop that subscribe button and ding the bell because I'm always here for all your best fine art tutorials and art biz advice. Of course, to create any decent painting, you gotta start off with a pretty solid drawing. So I had a really good time taking my time and freehanding this skull. If you're curious about my transfer process, I'm just using carbon paper to trace out my initial drawing on my linen painting surface. I do actually have a video detailing exactly how I do this and how you can do it, whether or not you have carbon paper. So check around for links if you wanna see that. And next, of course, is my own Kaylee Bernard secret sauce backgrounds that I love to make. For the colors I'm using in my skull painting trio, I decided that I wanted to have it way more dynamic and lifelike. Obviously, this is a very dead skull, but I just wanted to really rejuvenate and give it some good life. So I wanted to do far more than just the traditional grayscale that I feel we see a lot of skulls painted in. So I decided to go in and mix some nice um, cool greens for a lot of the highlights, kind of like a mossy natural green. And then I decided to keep the shadows a bit warmer. So I made some nice deep browns and burgundies to use throughout it. And of course, kept the green unified all the way through as well. So I'm just briefly touching on my paint mixes here, but if you are interested in a more thorough explanation as well as a more detailed step-by-step -step of painting one of these skulls in particular, I do have this available as a workshop on my Skillshare as well as for only $4 on my website. So check it out. I've got multiple workshops on both Skillshare and my own personal website that can really help improve your drawing and painting skills. This one is actually the first skull I painted and it was actually the first skull I think I may have ever painted. I've definitely drawn skulls before, but I, as far as I can remember, this is the first human skull I've ever painted. So I really had a good time, like I was saying, experimenting with the colors, trying to make things a little bit more exciting and lifelike. And then I just really enjoyed getting into the nitty gritty and finding every little twist, cavity, protrusion, just so much going on. I just really appreciated seeing the way that our bones are like little sculptures underneath our skins. It's just beautiful to see all the pockets and divots and twists and turns and ups and downs of these bones, especially how thin they can be in certain areas. It's just incredible to think about how strong bones are, but yet how fragile they are too. I wanted that to really come through with my paintings. And if you didn't catch it, this skull I actually painted live on YouTube in real time. So I have a two-part real-time demo of this still on my channel. So if you'd really like to see exactly how I painted this, check that out. Just put on some music and enjoy the show. So this second skull I did was, I feel, a bit of an improvement on the first. Everything is a learning curve, of course. And with the first skull, I felt like I was kind of getting the dimension, getting the shape, kind of learning a bit about the texture. This second skull, I really felt a lot more emboldened with my color choices. If you notice, the greens are a bit more green. The blues in the shadows are way more blue than gray. The burgundies and the pinks are really starting to jump out in both the highlights and lowlights. 
So this one I was really having fun with, feeling more confident with, and exploring my colors a bit more. And for the last painting, I told you I had that one as a real-time demo. Well, this painting is the one that I actually detail in the workshop I was telling you about, both on my website and on Skillshare. So if this painting really piques your interest, you should definitely check out my workshop because I literally go through every single step by step from the mixing. So if this skull piques your interest, you should definitely check out my workshop because I go through every single step from the drawing to the paint mixing to the application to how to do nice brush strokes and everything. I even give you my copyright free reference image to use for this or any other artwork. So I definitely suggest checking that out if you're into taking a deep dive on this super fun skull. Usually my paintings tend to be a much larger scale than this, but this was just a fun little experiment, something I've been wanting to try. And I had these great five by five blocks that I was able to affix my Belgian linen to. So I think I might continue to paint some skulls or baby bugs or other smaller works. Of course, I still want to do my figures and portraits, which need to be at a larger scale, but I would really appreciate it if you let me know in the comments what you think about this smaller miniature scale. I can't wait for you to see them in the very end when they're all done, because even though they are smaller with the resin and all of the fun things that go in them, they really do come out to be solid little pieces of artwork. Actually, speaking of enjoying these smaller works, I think I want to continue doing skulls, but I want to switch it up. And next, I think I'm going to do some animal skulls. I don't want to tell you what I've decided on already because I've got at least one or two extremely exciting ideas and already have the beautiful copyright free references. But I would love for you to tell me in the comments if there's any super awesome animal skulls that you would like to see me paint. And if I can find a good reference image and I just might do it, I will definitely shout you out in my video if you give me a really cool animal skull suggestion that I wind up using. Remember earlier when I was talking about how much I was admiring just how solid yet delicate the bones can be? Well, this area is like a perfect example because your brow and the um, ridge around your eye sockets is incredibly strong. That is some thick bone. I mean, you can really, you know, knock your head on a, on a few doorways and not hurt yourself, if you know what I mean. I've definitely done that plenty of times. But then you get right down just below that super strong area to this super delicate nasal cavity. And it's like, oh my God, the bone is like paper thin there. So part of the learning process of painting the skull effectively was figuring out how to use the same colors, the same brushes, the same model, but to show both a delicateness and also a strength in the same material. So as I was saying about the second painting, feeling a bit more confident with my colors, in this one, I really just decided to be fearless. I was like, whatever, my reference photo might not show green and pink throughout the jaw and cranium especially, but you know what? I do because I think that these shadows and these highlights should be warm and cool, should have a bit more dynamism. I'm not just trying to do some old yellowed boring skull that looks like Indiana Jones, you know, hasn't knocked the dust off in 80 years. So instead, we are going to be vibrant and just do whatever we want. <laughs> and like I was saying about having little improvements with each skull, this one, I felt like not only did I just get in there with the colors even more, but I found the glow. And I think you'll notice at the end that this one really, not only is it more of a dynamic pose being three quarters, but it's just, there's a real glow about it that I'm really proud of.
And after I let these bad boys cure for a couple of weeks, it is time to make some frames and pour some resin. I actually really love this hands-on process. Anytime I get to use power tools is a bonus in my opinion. But If you'd like to know how I build my frames specifically, check around for links. I do have an older video showing my process. And after a quick hit with the sander, everything is beautifully framed, ready to go and it is time to start getting creepy with what I must say is quickly becoming one of my favorite combinations. So in case you're curious, these bees along with the lizard and millipede that will be making their cameo soon, all of the little creatures that I use in my resin art are all found. I find a ton of these lizards, especially dried out on the windowsills, in the corners, in the cracks. Not that we have some kind of crazy lizard infestation, but we live on a lake and so they are just abundant. And the millipedes and the bees I actually found while still living in Oahu. Same thing with the millipedes there as the lizards here. Not that we lived in dirty houses, but they were just everywhere. You'd go outside, they'd be right inside your front door, they'd be in the corner of your kitchen, just dried up little curly cues. So all of these creatures have been very ethically found and sourced. Don't you worry. So whenever I create these resin pieces, I do them layer by layer. Each one has about four layers in it. And I used dried flowers that I found outside, dried ferns that I collect on my travels. I've got some gold leaf in there. And I'm sure you could see a second ago how I was gluing things down before putting the first resin layer. It is very important because if you don't glue things down, things will tend to swim. If you like more detail, I do actually have a video specifically on how I do my resin layer pours. It's not that difficult, but it is a very precise science. You have to be extremely exact or else you will completely destroy your piece. So uh, I actually did that and I show you it in that video I was just talking about. So if you want to learn about resin layering, I Definitely recommend you do some research. And bonus, if you remember from my first resin mold making video a few weeks ago, I have now started using the end little bits of the epoxy resin so I don't have to waste any and creating these lovely little 3D molds with all my beautiful pressed ferns. And guess what? I even got some that are for jewelry. Yes, so I've got a bunch of seashells and ferns and different things that are all going to be available in my shop. You should definitely check them out. And then letting everything cure for a few days once again, it was time for me to go ahead and paint the frames. That's right, finishing touches, gotta make everything beautiful. Oh my goodness, so satisfying, almost done. Oh yes, let me just bask in this moment for a minute. Oh, I am so happy with how these turned out. The epoxy resin is perfectly crystal clear, which doesn't always happen. So, oh, I am very, very happy with how these turned out. This first one actually has sold already, but as of right now, the other two are still available in my shop. If you'd like to take a peek and maybe support an underworked artist during this pandemic with some beautiful artwork for your own home, definitely check it out. Thank you guys so much for being here today. I so appreciate you every time. Pop that subscribe button and ding the bell. I'll see you next week.